Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And let me just tell you what I've got going to start with. We have a black canvas. So what I've done is I've bought a white canvas and painted it black with some black gesso. And then I've let that dry. So it's completely dry. Um, I actually did two layers of black gesso and uh, let, and let it completely dry. And then I put some phthalo green all over the canvas. I've not used any liquid clear on this one. Um, it's just phthalo green all over the canvas. I just want to show that it can be done without liquid clear. You don't necessarily need it. I know a lot of people are messaging me saying they can't get it. So you can do it without. And, and this is just to show that. <laughs> So the two colors that I've got in my palette is Thalo Green, over here, Thalo Green, and a Vermilion Red. But you can use any red, it's just the one that I've got. And Titanium White. And you want that dry Titanium White paint. Quite a thick paint. Impasto-y. <laughs> so let's um, watch this one. So using the fan brush, Getting some titanium white. Loading both sides of the fan brush. Loading both sides. I'm using a number three fan. You use whatever you've got. And I've got a design on my piece of paper there. <laughs> uh, just an idea. I start with an idea and then just go for it. So just tapping. Just tapping the paint and creating whatever shape that you want your northern lights to uh, run in. This is a painting of northern lights, if you don't know. <laughs> Aurora Barrage. <laughs> yeah, so you just touch in, letting the paint touch off the brush, and then uh, create your shapes. See, the hardest bit is putting the uh, paint on underneath. This bit's easy, easy peasy. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking that the, the top part is going to have more light because it's a bit more above us. So I'll make it a little bit thicker. Just an idea. So using the one inch brush, just pulling it. Pulling it straight up, you know, you're just dragging that paint upwards, and it mixes with the undercolor. It's a, an automatic reaction. It works very well, very easy. And you can use any uh, color underneath. Um, I've gone for phthalo green. It's quite strong. It's a transparent color. You want to use a transparent colour so it works well on the black. Thalo green works great. Another one you could use, Thalo blue or Prussian blue or Lizard and Crimson, Indian yellow. All of them are transparent enough for this. So I'm just going up and down, up and down. And then some areas I felt like it needed to be a bit stronger, so I just grabbed some more paint, a bit more white, and then just pulled that up as well. It's a nice, fun technique, this is. Really does well, really. Um, I know we're not all, all interested in selling paintings but these do well <laughs> so just pull them straight up straight up and what I sometimes do is this <laughs> just scrub the base or tap the base part just underneath just to uh, clean it up a bit really that's all I do that for. 
I mean, I've looked at quite a lot of pictures of uh, Northern Lights and they're all very different and uh, very magical looking. I, I do really like it. It does make a nice painting. A bit, bit of drama in the sky. Yeah, the uh, liquid clear that I use sometimes with this, it just makes it easier to uh, drag the paint. So I haven't used any, so I've got to really pull that paint up a little bit more. <laughs> but it's good to know that you can do it without. So now it's becoming harder to get. See, I just wanted that a bit lighter there. So you can play with it and you can decide if you want a bit more in certain areas and then you just add a bit more white. Okay, more a bit more white on that corner. So that's, like I said, that bit's sort of going overhead. So I'll make it a bit more bit more thicker and had this idea to add a bit of red in it so I uh, I start loading my brush with a bit of red as well using the uh, fan brush <laughs> oh, I forgot about that Thought I'd give the, give it a go over with the big old two inch brush. See, I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. See, it just blends with that colour underneath a little bit more. But there's some quite good curtains of light there. I like. There we go. Here's the vermilion red. You could, you could use any red. Um, I just wanted something a bit brighter, um, a bit stronger than alizarin crimson. I thought I'll test it. <laughs> See if I can add a bit of red into some of the areas. I always like experimenting. I find painting uh, is one long experiment. <laughs> one, one long uh, experiment of observation and practice and enjoyment. you got to enjoy it. Even when it's difficult, even when you're struggling and your paintings are all coming out wrong, <laughs> you, you still got to uh, tell yourself you're improving. This is practice. We're learning. So it's good. I don't mind if it doesn't work for me. I know that I can do a little bit more practice and then eventually... Eventually it will. That's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> but I like I like the continuous experimenting. Just adding a bit of red in there. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you love to uh, do this one? I'm watching it, thinking, ah, oh, I want to get the brushes out and do another one. <laughs> I could do it again, but better. Just put a little bit of the uh, more of the red in in places. I've actually got this uh, hung on the wall, and uh, it works really well. <laughs> Some of that red when I was putting it in, I thought mm, maybe I'm overdoing this, but actually it does look really good. Cause you don't look at your painting as close as this anyway, do you? You you have it on the wall, so it's a bit further away from your eyes. <laughs> and then things start happening. 
Uh, yeah, it worked. Worked really well. I'm really happy with it. It's lighting up my uh, corridor. <laughs> Yeah, like, like I said, you don't have to put that red in there. You could use a crimson or you could use something else. You could even use a yellow, Indian yellow, to make it a bit different. I just think the red works so well. And uh, if you don't know, um, you probably do know, but red is on the opposite scale of the colour wheel to green. So they work well together. They like colour buddies. <laughs> so I'm uh, loading the knife with some a mixture of phthalo green and vermilion. So that's the only two colours we've got on our palette today. Flatten it out, cut across a little roll of paint and we'll put a nice mountain in there. So you Press down pretty hard. Just really think about the top shape of the mountain. Don't worry too much about the bottom part. And you could paint a mountain that you know, or just make one up, it's up to you. I'm just making one up. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, with me making mountains up, am I just making the same mountain up over and over and over? <laughs> I try and look at a lot of different pictures of mountains and hope that some of it enters my brain so I have other ideas. I've actually uh, started studying buildings a lot recently as well. I'm gonna start adding a few buildings into the paintings. So I'm just scraping off the excess paint, just scraping it off. Mm -hmm. I thought, hmm, could be a mountain over there as well. Why not? Then use the two inch brush and just pull it out. Just pull it out. I've actually done another painting today. <laughs> I'm fully addicted. I can't help myself. But it's good because that means we have another episode for next week. I'm trying to continue these on a weekly basis. Hopefully you're enjoying them. So there's a bit more red in that. It almost goes up to a brownish. The... Uh, Thalo green and the, the red. The more red you get, the more brownish it looks. So cut across a little roll of paint and I want to show you on this one <laughs> how to do the mountain highlights. And someone said to me, oh, I did my highlights and they didn't quite work for me, so what can I do? So I thought, well, I'll show you the easiest way to solve that issue. So I'm just practicing doing the light pressure and then uh, say you've done this and you're like ugh I hate it. it, it's not light enough or whatever you go oops just whip it off with a knife scrape it off put some dark in like that, get some dark in there, scrape off the light and then use the big old brush and pull it out again so that way you get another chance <laughs> if you want more than one chance at doing your mountain that's what you need to do so hopefully that answers that question so here we go, let's do some Something a bit brighter. <laughs> so cut across, little roll of paint. 
no pressure, very lightly. Just let the paint just glide down. Very lightly, no pressure, just smooth. And you pull the knife, as you pull the knife down, you let it sort of open up a bit and you get a bit more. No pressure though. That's how you get all these nice breaks. It's just because the paint's quite dry and you're not putting on much pressure and then it breaks. And you get all these different actions that you might not have made up. <laughs> Makes your mountain quite individual. It's a little bit of uh, the same mixture, but a little bit darker for the shadow side. So I'm putting some fake lighting in here. <laughs> Because in reality, probably this mountain would be really dark. But let's pretend that the moon's out over on, on the right side and it's lighting this mountain up. <laughs> in your painting, you can do whatever you like, so... That's why I always think to myself. I'm not painting something that's real, I'm just making it up, so I can make lighting up as well. <laughs> and then no pressure, just creating a sh different shape. Letting things happen, a bit of a light peak there, a light on there. My original design, I don't know if you can see it behind. Um, I had the mountain really dark and uh, I changed my mind when I started painting. I thought if it's going to be that dark, it's not really going to work. It's going to be too dark, especially for the camera. <laughs> so I thought I'll lighten it a bit. I changed the mountain as well. But I'm I'm okay with changing my mind on the go. I don't mind. If it benefits the painting, all good. And it's good to be creative on the paint on the painting. <laughs> creative on the go, I was gonna say. I like I like to be creative, so I don't want any restrictions when I'm painting. You get a lot of restrictions if you're doing portraits. <laughs> oh, big warning here. <laughs> uh, if you were uh, painting in this method and you're whacking the brush on the canvas, make sure you've tightened it up. <laughs> Otherwise, that happens. And uh, and then you've got to fix your painting. But we've, I've just I've shown you how to fix mountains, and I can do the same thing again. <laughs> Use the knife to scrape off any of the paint that's splodged somewhere. Even if this splodged right in the middle on that mountain, it would have been okay because I could have just fixed it the same way. I'm just pulling the paint into the green, tapping it a little bit. Just means you've got a little bit more aurora there. <laughs> but there's an easy way to dull this green. The best way to dull it is either to put more green on or to add a little bit of red as well, because the red dulls green. There you go, some red on there. A bit more red and a bit more green, and it dulls it. And 
and then a bit of, <laughs> a bit of the old scraper <laughs> And then we need a little bit of light again, just for that mountain. So if it ever happens to you, there you know, now you know how to fix it. <laughs> I've shown you twice. <laughs> One of them was on purpose, the other one was not. This is the uh, light pressure, light pressure. See? I'm actually glad I did that, because that mountain's a lot nicer. A little bit of the shadow. I got a bit of dark, dark colour. Sometimes I'm not that keen on my shadow side because right, I lose some of the dark and the best way is to just get some dark on your knife and put it back. <laughs> you working with your paints and getting used to them and uh, working out how to manipulate and then it starts to become more and more fun. So I'm just lightly going over the mountain with the uh, one inch brush and then we create a bit of a misty area and it softens it a bit sends it a few miles back <laughs> get that mist at the base of the mountain Starting to feel the uh, these paints, really starting to feel the flow of them. Starting to really enjoy myself doing the wet and wet method. And uh, there should be a warning, really, on how addicted addictive they are. <laughs> you start knocking out paintings, it gets re really addictive. But it's fun, so. It's all good. So I was running out of paint on my palette, so I had to add some more phthalo green and some more vermilion. If you've never done a painting before, I've got to say this would be a good one because you're not using many colours. You're not breaking the bank. And black canvases, you don't need as much paint. So. Another positive for the black canvas. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> there we go. More paint. Fan brush. Load it full. Load it full. Both sides. Loads of paint. And thinking about where the trees are going to be. I have lots of trees and you just pull down like that. Just pull down. Lots of different heights. And you can put in a whole forest back there. That's why I did a, lot, a bit of tapping at the base. To get, add that light because then these trees go in front of it and you can see the uh, tops of the trees and it helps create that illusion of uh, depth in the painting it's just a game with light and dark always a game with light and dark <laughs> see so, you now I'm tapping some light again <laughs> so on light dark and now light again 
just for the base. Just tapping in the uh, the base of the trees, a little bit of light all the way along. <laughs> the two inch brush works really well for me. <laughs> Got a bit too much light there. Yeah, I, I do really like the two inch brush. It works. And it you feel powerful using it as well. Almighty two inch brush. <laughs> In fact, I have another brush that will be making appearance soon. Bigger than the two inch brush. <laughs> so loading the uh the old fan brush with a little bit of snow well in my, in my head it's snow it's not paint i don't use paint <laughs> in my head it, it's things uh, this is snow this brush has a load of snow on it and i'm just pushing it off that's that's the way i think so we're just thinking about the uh, land and I separated the land in two, two bits there. I had a bit of uh, where the land goes down and maybe it goes into a, a path or something. I wanted a, uh, a distinct separator. And then I brought it up a little bit towards the trees. So then you've got three parts really of land got that that goes to the trees this bit in front of the trees which I had a bit more light on to it just to pull it out a little bit and then there's the bit at the front so you got, uh, got that depth again <laughs> I mentioned that a few times yeah, we've got a big tree there and there. So load the brush full of paint, corner of the bristles, you just push, just push down. And then the further down you go, the more pressure. The more pressure, and the further down you go. And make sure you plant this in the right place. <laughs> because a lot of people and unfortunately, I've been guilty of it as well. <laughs> as I've said before, beginner mistakes, I've made them all. <laughs> and I still make them, to be honest. But um, one of the things with these big trees, don't have giant trees right near your mountain. <laughs> because it'll make that tree look absolutely enormous, or it'll make the mountain look tiny. So uh, we want to keep that illusion going by putting the big trees at the front it's not always like that in reality sometimes the big trees are at the back and the ones in front are a bit smaller a bit younger but it is, as we paint we've got to try and think about how we can make it look like these trees are close to us and the simplest way to do it is to make them big. <laughs> so I'm just using a little bit of paint to create an indication of some uh, tree trunks. Maybe there's one there. We don't know how many trees are here. There might be a few, might be one behind. <laughs> loads of paint, loads of paint on your brush. I find it easier to have a lot of paint on the brush for this bit. And you can just throw out your, your tree. Do a whole tree <laughs> with one lot of paint. I 
And plus, when you've got a ton of paint on your brush, it'll uh, dilute <laughs> that mountain qu quite easily. Because <laughs> sometimes, if you haven't got uh, much paint and you're painting over a mountain, you start to struggle. And like I said before, there's, <laughs> there's a golden rule for this technique is a thin paint will stick to a thicker paint. Also, if you mosh in loads of thick, dark paint, <laughs> you can squash them out and no problem with it. <laughs> So I'm just putting the indication of a uh, tree trunk again. And then using some phthalo green and white, maybe we can put some little highlights on these trees, just tap in wherever you want your highlights to go, just put them in, corner the brush, think about where the light's coming from and throw in some nice little highlights. I tend to think about the, as it comes to the bottom, don't have as much, seems to work. So you start at the top and then work down. There could be a bit of snow on the trees or I think I want, wanted them to get a bit darker there. I think I thought there's too many. <laughs> See, you can do that. You can make decisions like that. If you think it's a bit too bright, you can darken them using your dark again. And just pick out little bits where you want your light. And then just thinking that it's be dark underneath. Trying to sit those trees into the snow now. Have some some snow in front. And that picks up the under colour as well. Remember, there's the uh, phthalo green all over the canvas, so it's picking it up. So we've got a nice snow there, and I've got a touch lighter. <laughs> I wiggled the brush a bit then, and bring that snow out in front. So by going that little bit lighter, it just brings it forward. I like that little tree that's <laughs> sort of uh, pointing at the mountain. <laughs> Using a liner brush. Just putting in a few little details, a few little sticks and twigs and things. Maybe there's a few little things growing. Who knows? Wiggling him out my <laughs> my liner brush, which has got a wonk on it. These little details that just give it a little bit more life. Just make me want to do another painting. <laughs> I fancy doing one with a lot of trees in it. So I'm just uh, grabbing some of the vermilion red and put a little initial on there, a little JB. And there we go, there's the painting. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. 
it's uh, still <laughs> the painting is still a bit wet but um, to be honest this picture is a little bit bluish um, it's sort of in between it's more like this I suppose um, but where it is it's a little bit darker on the wall and it works really well uh, where it's situated but anyway that's um, this episode hope you enjoyed it hope it gave you an idea on how to do this and uh, maybe you'll have a go anyway thanks very much for watching uh, don't forget to press the like button and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe please <laughs> anyway thanks very much for watching and i'll see you at another one cheers bye